Let me start by asking you, what's your reaction to the recent uh, disqualification of the incumbent governor of Fedo State, uh, that's uh, Godwin Obaseki, by the APC Screening Committee over alleged inconsistencies in the governor's academic credentials? Sir? Well, I, I think the point to make is that if the man ran on the same uh, party platform, you know, some four years ago, and the party did not spot any discrepancy, why is it now that they are spotting the discrepancy? So it boils down to the fact that there is a crisis in the party, and there is an open battle between the national chairman of the party and the equivalent governor of a do state. And so one can easily put, you know, one or two together and arrive at the answer. You know, it boils down to politics. There are processes for verification of certificates if they are fake. And that can be done by anybody. You know, any member of the public can do it in so far as you have those documentations, you know, to do cross-checking. And so uh, I'm not convinced that the outcome is not a product of the internal crisis within the state, actually between the national chairman and the equivalent governor of the state. Now, some have described uh, the action as an illegitimate decision. Uh, how appalling is the fact that the, the screening committee utterly disregarded the statement from the register of the University of Ibadan, sir? Well, I mean, you are talking about the, 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 the propriety of the process. Exactly. Whether, th whether things were correctly done or not. And it still boils down to that. You know, if there are attestation to the fact that the credentials that the governor presented, you know, are not forged, then that ought to be enough, you know, for that. You know, after that bit I presented, when certificates are missing, in so far, it, uh, it, it can't be authenticated by the appropriate, you know, authorities. Uh, shouldn't the same APC be held accountable, sir? Uh, for knowingly fielding a man with a dodgy certificate in 2016, and uh, even declaring its governorship as a fraud. I mean, that was the, the point I was making, that if you feed the same man, and he went through all the processes, and uh, nothing was spotted, no questions raised. Now, you know, back in 2020, when the man is due for re-election, and he's being screened out on the basis of the same certificates, that he presented in 2016, you know? Uh, th that, that is the big question. You know, there's a big command there, you know? So uh, you, can't, you can paint everyone with the same brush and say both the candidates and the party are fraudulent. Hmm. INEC also could be held culpable for, having, for not properly verifying the document itself. Uh, what's your take on this, sir? Well, I think that once there is a contradiction or a contravention of the law, it is appropriate or equal bent on every agency that is involved in the process you know, to raise those questions. But I, I do know that primarily the INEC will tell you that it is the party that has you know, a final say over who they feed as their candidate, you know, for any elective position. And I guess that is probably what played out at that level. Let me also ask you, sir, um, would Obaseki himself be, have, have been meted with this shocking treatment, if not because of his brawl with Toshio Mole? Well, I think the, the answer is obvious. You know, right from, uh, from the inauguration of the so-called and uh, House of Assembly, that was when the contradiction, you know, came into the open. And it became an open confrontation between, you know, a, a supposedly godson and a godfather. And Nigerian political turf is not new to conflicts between godfathers and godson. We saw how Chimaro uh, Kionamani uh, uh, trashed uh, Ubudu in Enugu State. We saw the maker of force, you know, and um, uh, these people in Anabra State uh, with Ugege Saga. We've seen Udong Emmanuel 
Trump Fabio in uh, in Aquaibon. We've seen uh, Ladoja, of course, and the later Dedibu in uh, your state. So it's a familiar tough in terms of these confrontations. But the unfortunate thing is that the issues are not about governance at all. Mm. You know, they are about personal ego, you know, self-aggrandizement, self-interest of the actors. That is the unfortunate thing about them. Talking about uh, the historical uh, analysis about Godfatherism and the examples that you have cited earlier, I mean, is it safe to say that Obaseki himself has actually orchestrated his own political demise as his, at this time? We can't say that Godfatherism, despite the examples that I have given, that is it's institutionalized. It's not known to the law. So anything that is not known to law is bound, you know, to create crisis. But when you are when you are operating within the confines of the law, you know there are the law itself provides you know notes of accountability. In this case, it is it isn't there. You know, it's it's, it's all about ego. It's all about ego. And in, in in not just in Africa, globally, politicians politicians do take risk. They play the deceit game, you know, just to access power. And once they have power in their hands, they can do anything they think they can do, maybe as the law permits, or even extending the boundaries of the law. Now, let me ask you, sir, what will you say about the fact that Obaseki himself is not uh, appealing the decision? Instead, he's decided to jump ship to the opposition, the PDP. Well, again, this is one of the many contradictions in Nigeria, you know, uh, Nigeria's politics. As we have it today, there are no, uh, what you could call, functional political parties in Nigeria anchored on ideology, you know, with a mass base where they draw their strength from the masses themselves, the electorate. We don't have them. Those structures have been subverted. Now, if as far back, before the, the first military coup in 66, Nigeria had independent candidacy, you know, within the political process. So if you have, you know, event for independent candidates, Obasaki will not need to go through any political party. He will appeal to the broad electorate for his mandate. So when you close that, and knowing that the, all the parties that we have today are what you might refer to as actual war parties, mm. you know, if, if that is the case, it, it, it means that any, any, any person who, uh, whose base instincts is aroused can go to the actual war party for satisfaction. And that is basically what is playing out in Nigeria, not just in uh, those states alone. Now, considering the fact that between 1999 and uh, now, Many Nigerian politicians, uh, highly placed officials, have been caught with dodgy credentials. Is this not a pointer to why no tangible dividends of democracy for the past 20 years have not reached the masses? I think you have, you have captured it. I recall very well when Obasanjo was the president. You know, there were uh, uh, dodgy cases of uh, certificate, you know, forgery, people claiming you know, uh, who, they, who, 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 who they, they wear it, you know, in terms of their personality. Mm. And Salisu, uh, Salisu Buhari was one of the first persons that was caught, you know. And that Mora, we started off on that Mora, Mora high, uh, high ground. He came to the man in Lagos. That process did not see the light of the day. And it, I, I think to my knowledge being there, when they were to audit the National Assembly, it was discovered that virtually over 60% of members at that time had one problem with their certificate or the other. So to avoid a national scandal, I think that they dropped that process, you know. But what it tells you is that we, we, we don't have a nation building elite in this country who are out to serve the country and serve the country, not just on a developmental process. We don't have that, you know, structures in place. That also account you know, for the sufferings of Nigerians, for the lack of, uh, you know, policy direction, and for the political inertia that we have in the country. Some critics, sir, have also, an analyst uh, and political watchers have actually also argued that uh, the Bayelsa uh, post-election loss by the APC 
may have eventually, with or without the political scuffle between uh, Obaseki and uh, Oshiomole, uh, actually uh, been a basis for, for the problems. Uh, and uh, one big reason to wonder, sir, what's your perspective on this, sir? No, I saw the analysis by Sam Omasa here in the nation. And uh, the, the, oh, the proprietorship of the nation is in league with Adam Oshomole as far as this crisis in the Edo state is concerned. Exactly. And so the, everybody is using, using his or her medium you know, to express a partisan opinion about the crisis. But what I do know is that not many Nigerians are comfortable with the fact that the judiciary has seized the role of the electorate. You know, and the judiciary has never has, has not always come clean in terms of their intervention in most of these electoral cases. We saw what happened in Imo recently. You know, a, you know, a, a mathematical award mm. to somebody, you know, who was the least candidate in terms of the scorecard of the electoral process in that in that state. So I, I'm not quite sure to what extent we can apply. You know, uh, I'm not offering a legal opinion, but may, just mere logic. I'm not sure how, to what extent we can apply the legal precedent in, in Bayesa, you know, to what is going on in Edo State. INEC had issued uh, warnings of likely crisis in Edo State if the party primary and the general elections were not properly conducted. Uh, what does this debacle portend for the upcoming elections in the state? Sir? Well, I, I think the stakes are high. And even before the outcome of the so-called screening, of Obaseki, there have been all kinds of uh, toggery going on in the state. You know, party partisans were being attacked here and there, you know, with claims and counter claims in terms of who is responsible. And so if that is anything to, to go by, it heralds, you know, a, 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 a possibility, I mean, the possibility of a crisis election, you know, uh, as, we, as we move towards the election. Definitely, there will be crisis in the state because Obas Obasaki has his own supporters. There is a viewpoint that the battle between Adam Oshomole and Obasaki is not the way we see it, but rather it's a battle between Adam Oshomole and the corporate Benin. And so, if that is the case, it means that the forces of Edo South, you know, a substantial part of the Edo South, will align with Obasaki's ambition. And so, it's going to be a ding dong kind of affair. Hmm. Professor Sylvester Adiakaini, we really appreciate your insightful analysis as far as this issue is concerned. As events unfold, we could hope that we could also reach out to you to get a further perspective and clarity uh, in the future, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.